Those who wish to speak, uh, two minutes each, uh, and then we will close, and we might actually get done by 12.30, which um, I would appreciate. So, uh, Mr. Shapiro, your name has come up a few times. Um, before today, I didn't know who you were before I heard from Mr. Morlock. Um, nice to meet you. And, nice uh, to meet you as well. The floor is yours. And, Bye. And, and I would like just to ask, you don't have to because this is free speech time, um, the, um, the subject matter is combating hate while protecting the Constitution. And if you have a couple minutes worth of ideas on that, that would be great. If you'd rather not talk on that, that's okay too. Oh, no, I'm perfectly happy to great. talk on that. Thank you. Well, I appreciate the 120 seconds. So uh, your job, obviously, here at the legislature is to ensure that our freedom of expression is maintained, that our First Amendment rights are maintained. And what that means first and foremost, in my experiences on college campuses, is that the heckler's veto must be stopped. So I was at Cal State Los Angeles in February 2016, and there was almost a riot there, and the police were not allowed to do their jobs, and students were physically assaulted in the crowd. It is the job of this legislature to ensure that police can do their jobs. And when they do do their jobs, and they're allowed to do that at places like UC Berkeley, everything goes fine. And I'd like to make a point here about UC Berkeley. The reason it cost $600,000 to bring me to UC Berkeley was not because of me. Okay, everybody keeps suggesting that it was because I was coming. I'm so controversial and so terrible. I came exactly one year before, and it cost this many dollars. It cost zero dollars for security at UC Berkeley. The reason it cost $600,000 at UC Berkeley is because Antifa and violent groups had decided that Berkeley was their domain, and they were going to be able to run roughshod over law enforcement there. And this does bring up one final point that I want to make in the long period of time that I have to discuss, and that is the problem with a legislative body such as yours trying to draw lines specifically about what hate speech constitutes. Because the fact is that one of the reasons groups like Antifa show up is not because they know who I am, it's because they have been told by people that I am promulgating hate speech, which is utterly false and utterly untrue. There are people who say vile things and with whom I disagree. Among them, people like Milo Yiannopoulos, who sent me a picture of a black baby on the day of my child's birth because I wasn't sufficiently standing up for the white population, supposedly. But that does not mean that the legislature gets to decide what hate speech is. I've been labeled the promulgator of hate speech when I was the number one target of hate speech, according to the ADL, among the journalistic community in 2016. So let me suggest that as a legislature, your chief job is to ensure that my taxpayer dollars in this state go toward making sure that people like me and people with whom I disagree get to speak in places like college campuses and not toward regulating what speech you find good and what speech you find bad. It's a really dangerous business, and there's speech I don't like, there's speech you don't like, but if we can't agree that there is a difference between speech and violence, we're not going to be able to have a free state, let alone a free country. Thanks. Thank you. Much appreciated. I think, I think we all agree with you. Well, that'd be um, nice. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Next witness, uh, can you give us to come here and, and testify today. Let me ask my legislative Republicans to come here. They wanted to actually have me on one of the panels, but Democrats wouldn't allow that sort of thing because that might be too much free speech. So we have to ensure that, that only only people on the left get to get to talk and members of law enforcement. So I was glad to hear from, from all those people, but it would have been nice if they would have allowed one person from you know the right to actually talk for more than 120 seconds. It, it doesn't seem like a particularly fair division of time. You mentioned Heckler's veto. Um, can you embellish on that sure. and why, why you, you wanted to bring that up to the panel? So the, uh, one of the big ways that, that free speech has been curbed by the left is by people in administrative positions, people who are elected officials and law enforcement officials, who basically allow groups like Antifa to drive the cost of doing business so high that they then turn around and cancel events. So what they say is it's going to cost a million dollars to bring Shapiro in, let's just cancel the event, it costs too much money, we can't do it. And so what they're essentially allowing is people who are the most violent to dictate who gets to speak and who doesn't which is precisely the opposite of what should be happening. That's why I was making the point. It's not me. I'm not the one who's driving the cost up. It's these violent groups. And when you say to the violent groups, well, what can we do to lower the cost? The violent groups are immediately going to move by increasing the cost, right? They're going to get violent. They're going to require lots of law enforcement. And then they shut down the city. So that has to stop because otherwise, basically, all you have is an inside-outside game with elected Democrats working with outside agitators in order to prevent free speech from occurring. What are your ideas to stop them? Uh, you, you need to allow the police to do their damn job. This is really not difficult. It's not difficult. At Berkeley, they had the police. They're doing their jobs. If they had the police allowed them to do their jobs in February, none of this would have happened. You know, the fact is that they've been telling the police for years in places like Berkeley that they can't use pepper spray against violent protesters, that they have to be very careful about how they appear in terms of arresting people. When I was at Cal State LA, they were, they were, telling, they were telling the police, apparently, that they were supposed to stand down rather than arresting students. The more you do that, the more violence you're going to get on these campuses, just as you would anywhere else in the world. When you say violence is okay, violence increases. 
What are your thoughts about um, some of the, the lawmakers asking if they could tax the taxpayers to pay for these these issues that happen on campus? Well, I mean, they, so there were a couple of things that they were suggesting. One is they were saying, can we tax the speakers for people coming on campus, which is just asinine. I mean, the answer is no, you can't do that, right? It's your job to provide a free speech forum, and it is my job to come if I'm invited. Uh, second, the taxpayers didn't pay for me to come to Berkeley. The taxpayers paid for law enforcement to provide security against violent people. I'm not the one smashing ATMs. Um, and as far as the idea that the taxpayers should be covering the cost of all of this, again, the cost would be a lot lower if we just allowed the police to do their jobs. And for all the people, it's amazing to me, all these Democrats in the state legislature are suddenly concerned about cost containment. I mean, what, what's, what's the deal with that? I mean, we have trillions of dollars of debt in this state. They can't contain a cost if they're like dependent on it, but suddenly they decide to draw the fiscal hard line when it comes to protection of free speech. Do you think that you're being shut down? Well, I mean, I wasn't shut down at Berkeley. I think there's a danger that, that I would be shut down if some of the Democrats in this legislature had their way. They would hide behind things like time, place, and manner restrictions or behind the heckler's veto. But as long as the police are allowed to do their job, I'm happy to come and talk to any crowd, whatever color, whatever viewpoint. Anything else you'd like to add I haven't asked? Uh, the only thing that I would add is just that this attempt by some folks on the left to conflate speech they don't like with hate speech and then suggest that there are legislative remedies is a violation of First Amendment ideals and legislation that actually pushed that would be a violation of the First Amendment itself. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. It was nice to meet you. You too.